Okay, so good morning once again. Welcome to uh, BC202 Christian Marriage and Family. Uh, my name is Jean George and uh, I, am, uh, uh, I am a counselor by profession. Um, I joined APC in 2004 and started uh, uh, with ministry in 2010, 2011. Um, I am part of the um, counseling center at APC. So I'm, uh, I, I work as a counselor as well as uh, teach the subject on marriage and family. Uh, I, I am married to, uh, I have 18 years to my credit and uh, praying that the Lord gives us a lot more wonderful years together. We have two children. I have a son who's 16 and a daughter who is 12. My, my son is in 11th grade and my daughter is in 7th grade. Uh, I love teaching. Um, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a person who loves to learn from others. So um, I, I think maybe as a disclaimer, maybe I should tell you, even though you know I've been teaching the subject for the last um, five years, um, I, I, you know, I don't think we can ever master it completely. Uh, I, I'm here with uh, just as many mistakes, uh, or probably more than what maybe some of you have made. But by the grace and the power of God, uh, you know, I can stand here today and uh, through His Spirit, um, work alongside with each one of us as we as we learn together. Okay, so I'm looking forward to uh, an interactive session, questions and and uh, you know learning. And because there are so many uh, of you outside of the diamond, uh, I'm based in Bangalore, so uh, the country that uh, a few of us are in. You know, we'd love to hear uh, the way that you, you know your perspectives, your understanding. However, when we look at the entire picture. Uh, we have one standard, we have the Bible as our standard, and all that we are going to be learning is from that standard. It's not from our cultures or our uh, upbringing or our learning, but it is from God's word. Amen? Okay. So um, before we get started, just a couple of instructions um, that the book, we are going to be following the manual of Christian marriage and family. And uh, this is uploaded on um, uh, for, for the online students. It's uploaded on your class uh, class work. So if you just go there and you will find the PDF of that so you could download it and you could uh, walk through this, you could follow through as we are learning. For the e-learning students, um, it is there on the e-learning site, uh, on, on, the, on the tab of textbook. If you just uh, download it, you will be able to find that and follow along, all right? Okay, so I think before uh, we, we're going to be, um, uh, you know, even as we look at uh, uh, anything that God has instituted for, for our pleasure and for our good, um, you know, we need to really understand it through the way that he has seen it. Um, but before we get there, you know, I, I want to go one step back and really hear maybe from a few of you, um, you know, you could just unmute yourself and just uh, uh, talk about what you think about how um, and what have ha do you see as the expressions of marriage that you see in your world around? Okay, I'm just going to repeat that question. What do you see as the expressions of marriage? Uh, you know, in 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 your um, in your area of influence. You know, among your community, among the people that you see, maybe your friends, maybe your working um, people that you see who have been married. What kind of expressions of marriage have you seen? So, um, you know, don't wait for anybody. Just go ahead, shoot. And uh, yes, Charles, go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm Charles Andy. The expression that I see of marriage around me is that the character and the discipline of children is determined by the type of marriage that is at home. If the, the father and mom or the parents at home are okay, they are healthy in terms of marriage, 
the children are also going to be also healthy in terms of character and in terms of discipline. So there is a direct relationship between the children's behavior and the marriage health at home. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Charles. What he said is there is a direct relation between um, the, the relationship in a couple and the way that parenting takes place. Wonderful insight. Yes. Who would like to go next? I'll, I'll go. Yes, Charles. Um, yes. I mean, when, I, when you said expressions of marriage, uh, my wife and I, we talk about this a lot. We observe. Uh, and something I, we always notice is whenever there's a family, we see them in church, or like, especially with small toddlers because we have two young ones. We notice that um, the wife or the mother is generally has a frown. <laughs> it's like, most of the times agitated, angry, scolding, shouting at everyone. The husband gets it. Kids get it. Uh, at the at the father, generally the head of the family is uh, a little um, uh, well. I don't know what's the word, but uh, not not so worried. Like trying to you know be in his own world, own space. You know, like not so bothered. <laughs> so I, I typically I look around, and most families with kids, uh, I see them in restaurants, churches, parks, and it's like the normal scenario: the wife being agitated and. Um, the father business of the world. So okay. Maybe not the best expression, but yeah, on the most practical. Okay. Thank you, Sam. Okay, young, young. Uh, I mean, unmarried people don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Sam is giving you um, another perspective of things we probably haven't, uh, we don't want to see in our lives, right? But, but yes, when there is a disconnect, it, it. It is so evident in the faces of people, and that's an observation. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Yes, who else would like to go? Uh, Dinesh? Dinesh? Yes, Dinesh. Please go ahead. Uh, Kennedy, I, I'll get, get to you. Yes, yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, look, uh, uh, most uh, uh, character uh, in marriage, uh, couples have to... Uh, uh, for we for keep uh, each other uh, in the times of uh, uh, tough times and uh, understand each other. Um, likewise, he, they have to stay, uh, uh, fix the time for the each other children. Uh, also balancing uh, their professor uh, professor life uh, they have to balance uh, on the uh, requirements to be job to uh, to avoid job uh, also uh, likewise um, external parents uh, also uh, influence uh, them. Likewise, uh, both a uh, husband wife spending uh, individual friends gather out by understanding uh, it. Um, it is a uh, uh, it is more of a love uh, between each other. Uh, uh, I found uh, yeah, with uh, my friends and relatives. Right. Thank you, Dinesh. Um, you you were meaning to say one with within a marriage there needs to be a lot more um, uh, qualities that are there of forgiveness, of love, of understanding, of being able to walk with each other even through thick and thin. And very often that's not what we probably see in the world around. Um, that marriages break very often because of uh, a reason, mul multiple reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Okay, maybe one or two people more. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yes, Hope. Yes. Oh, Hope or Kennedy. I, I think it's you, Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy. Go on. Yeah, I, I think marriage is a troubled institution currently. Because uh, there are so many people who are in marriage but are facing a lot of challenges, and this would be attributed to lack of preparedness. And uh, 
most people like in the boat where I sit, people get to marry without seeking the right they go to guide them. So it's a challenge. It's not a bed of roses. Okay, Kennedy, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear you clearly. Would you mind putting it on the chat, please? That will be really helpful. Yes, Charles, you have something to say? Thank you, Kennedy. Charles, you have something to say? No, I forgot to throw my hand. Sorry. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, I'd like to hear from some women. We have some ladies here. Come on, ladies. I'd like to hear from you. What have, what have you seen as expressions of marriage? around ladies yes ma'am yes rupa expressions of marriage we have seen uh, very good friendship and at the same time now we observe so many relationships not even they are not able to see each other faces and we see a lot of hatred and all that around us it's it is very sorry to see that mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you rupa anybody else maybe one more lady hi uh taisha hi taisha hi 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 Pastor Jean. um for me what i've seen is um teamwork um mm -hmm. teamwork in terms mm -hmm. of they work together in their job and they respect mm -hmm. each other boundaries in their job and also they work they can work together in their in their relationship but mm -hmm. there's also a thin line when you work together as a couple but i've seen that some couple does that so well they're a team player and they communicate well you know and they have each other's back so that i've seen that expression of mine and i think it's beautiful when, when, when you have that. Absolutely. Thank you, Taisha. Thank you. Yeah. And welcome to class. We didn't get to hear from you, but welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nisha. Nisha said, uh, you see ego, miscommunication among people you've met. Absolutely. So, um, so I, I think all of us uh, been around people, been in churches, been among communities, have observed what marriages often look like. Uh, some of us may have seen excellent examples. Some of us may not have. Nevertheless, there is a standard that uh, God has established, a biblical understanding of what marriage should be and what it is, and the blessing that comes as a result of that understanding. So that's what we are going to be looking at. So as you know, as I pose this question to you, you know, what are the expressions of marriage um you know if we look at our current right now there are very um, many distorted expressions of marriage and you will see that um in uh, uh you know where there is same-sex marriages where there are marriages where there are relationships that do not follow a committed um, a ceremony that is there are live-in relationships there are child uh, marriages there are marriages that happen within um, uh, you know maybe within uh, incestuous relationships so when when you look at it there is so many expressions of it and um, uh, we begin to wonder you know where has all of the purity and the sacredness of marriage gone but when we go, go back into god's word the standard we understand marriage from a biblical perspective okay and so we're going to take off our glasses um, that looks at the world and we're going to put on whatever maybe uh, the word the uh, god empowered glasses and going to begin to look at marriage so even as i'm speaking to a lot of married people here okay remember that through this course this is not just an academic course right this is a course uh, which and all of all of our courses that have been instituted it's not just to learn and to get head knowledge but to be able to imbibe in your life okay so for all of us who are married and and for those who are seeking marriage uh, we want to make a commitment that by the end of this course we see 
marriages differently and we work in our marriages just as differently okay so that's the that's the um, that's the drive okay and uh, i think we would have achieved uh, a, a great reward when we are able to do that so i want to encourage each of you after every class go back and think of what can i change today to um, interact with my spouse or maybe in my attitude or in myself uh, what can i do to change things so that my marriage becomes what god intended to be okay so i have a thumbs up on that yes i, I believe i do okay all right thank you yes madam you got a thumb up amen thank you maxon all right so when we look at scripture um you know the the question that we uh, need to um uh, you know really be firm about is who is the one who designed marriage okay um so if uh, you know like most of us here so i want to speak uh, you know when when i'm looking at my culture in india uh, um you know i think my generation probably a few a uh, generation uh, behind me you know marriage was more a social institution you know you finish your studies you do a bit of work and then you are expected to get married and marriage comes uh, more because your parents want to force you into it or they think that you know you need a companion or you know someone to um, help you with your chores or help you with your self esteem so there are many reasons and many um, people who would push you into marriage think and and it comes to mind that okay is this something that you need to socially do? but scripture completely shows us that it was god's heart marriage was god's heart he is the designer of marriage okay so when when we look at scripture when we look at the beginning right at the beginning you know god was the one who solemnized the first marriage and all of us know you know it it was god bought um uh, uh eve to adam god bought eve to adam so when you look at that scripture and, and maybe i will quickly just read out that passage of scripture maybe next time on uh, you know i don't know how many of you have the material here with you but maybe next time on when i when i bring up a verse maybe somebody could read it so you know we could all get connected together so i'm just going to read a couple of verses i'm going to start with genesis 2 verse 18 okay uh, uh, uh the chapter says god said it's not good for the man to be alone i'll make him a helper uh, a companion okay and then as you go through it you see how god formed um uh, from the dirt of the ground everything else okay and he brought it to man to name uh, uh name all the animals but yet when he looked at man he felt that you know he it is not good for the man to be alone so all the men who are looking for brides say amen god does not want you to be alone and those who got you know many choices say amen god will give me one okay and god puts this man to sleep and removes a rib and placed it with flesh and brings eve okay and if you look at verse 24 and 25 it says therefore a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife and they become one flesh so you see here god knew that there wasn't any other creature that he had created the cattle the donkey the kangaroo the rat the dog the cat not none of them could match man well enough okay and god made something beautiful so that he could connect um the man too and we see that even even though god saw that all that he created was good that one thing he said was not good was for man to be alone and that's why man needed a helper needed a companion because on his own he would have been uh he have he would have been isolated he would have been lonely he would have been you know sad maybe i should ask all the singles here you know what are your expressions of loneliness right but god saw that that's that that shouldn't be and that's why he bought woman uh, in order to eliminate these 
at you know, feelings or the what he was going through these loneliness or um the this the sense of feeling isolated or being very self-centered in order to eliminate that is why god bought eve um to 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 adam so here we see that god solemnized he was the first one to conduct a wedding okay so it was god's idea so it's not the idea of our parents or the idea of society it is god's idea so when when you look at uh, genesis 2:24 and 25 you begin to see the meaning of marriage you really get to see the essence of what marriage is you know it's it's like a textbook definition where where you know god says it is marriage is one man and one woman uh coming together leaving everything else okay he they, he leaves and he cleaves so that they could be one person before god so that's verse 24 and 25 for you the definition of marriage okay it is one man and one woman leaving everything else coming together embracing one another so that they could become one person before god okay so when when god god was the one who designed this union he was the one who bought a a, a counterpart for man now even as you look at this counterpart they are uh, the the woman was suitable for man but yet was different okay the woman was suitable for man but was yet different so was he he made someone you know who who was probably physically different who who was intellectually a bit different emotionally different and maybe for those of us which which you know we're going to be exploring later but those of you who've been married for many years you would have understood the way that you emote and the way that your spouse emotes are very very different okay now for example if you have a conflict um uh, generally now this is there can be exceptions to the rule generally there will be a woman who would like to talk it all out you know iron it all out finish it and you know she settled whereas the man would like to again generally exceptions are there okay generally would like to you know go watch a football game or go play some basketball or go see a cricket match or uh, you know go try and win something and then he settled of it so we we are we are uh, we are different we are suitable but different but what god brought together was was in order to bring about something really dynamic and something that is effective okay so uh, understanding that god was the one who designed uh, marriage okay so when you look at um, the scripture you know and and we i i just want to bring you back to what uh, um uh, you know uh, what what is written in in the new testament um where matthew quotes the same uh, uh you know same in in a gist so it's in matthew 19 verse 5 and 6 he says for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and unite with his wife and two will become one okay so that's where again you see jesus sorry that you recording what jesus says is that jesus also says the same thing he says man will leave his father and mother unite again cleave and the two will become one so it is something that 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 continues to uh, to be a thread from what the old testament says to what the new testament says okay and when you look at these three words okay which which makes the definition of marriage it is it's very significant okay and i think that's a question we can ask ourselves if we are married you know have i left have i left other relationships now what this meaning of leaving comes we will discuss a lot more um in detail so have i left my other earthly relationships have i cleaved have i joined together you know what this joining means it's like you have a, two pieces of paper you put glue in it and you attach it and you you find it really hard to rip it off because if you rip it off you will have some parts of it on the other okay so leave to cleave 
And because you've cleaved, you become that one person. That is to join together, to be, to be meshed, to be yoked together. So that is how God created this union of, of a man as well as a uh, uh, as a woman so if it is god who's instructed this marriage if he's the one who's designed it then shouldn't he know the best about it right so are we in the right place yes we are because he will tell you you know if he's something he will tell you hey this is what i want to do I'm sorry, I think I got disconnected for a bit. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma we lost you. Am I audible, yes. students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, okay, yes, okay. yes ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, um, sorry, my question was, yeah. So, uh, if God was the one who decided it, you know, uh, he's definitely the one who will instruct us and tell us how it should go. Okay, so we're going to be looking at some perspectives that concern marriage and what we should be looking at. So one of the first um, perspectives or one of the first instructions God's give uh, instructions or understanding that God has given us is that marriage is a good thing. Marriage is a good thing. Okay, uh, when if so we understand when god designs it it is good okay and he's declared it to be good um to add to this we, you know we see this in scripture in proverbs 18 22 it says he who finds a wife finds a good thing he who finds a wife finds a good thing and what else and he obtains favor from the lord so it is when when god has brought two people together, it is a good thing and there is favor in it. Now, uh, even as we are saying this, there may be certain realities that we are in, right? Our marriages may not be as what God designed it to be. And if we see that, um, uh, you know, when, when we are looking at um, uh, this, this entire understanding of how God would like the marriage to be, yet in reality we are dealing with a situation that may be very difficult. But what is it that God wants us to do? It is even in the midst of the specific situation that you face, you, like I said, remember I talked about glasses, we choose to look at it with the uh, you know the view of how god god has placed it okay we look at it the way we look at it at the way god instituted so he has instituted that we uh, see marriage as a good thing so anytime uh, you know uh, uh, you feel a sense of um, disappointment make that confession make that confession that the lord says that the marriage that that my marriage is a good thing okay so if if uh, you know um, if if you can with with your spouse you know go back and and uh, um, you know at points of time that you're not able to really see um, what the goodness of it is you know speak this out my marriage was designed by god to be a good thing for, to be to bless others with it to find favor for us to be able to be able to be enriched to be able to grow uh, in in his kingdom and what he wants us to be okay so marriage as we have seen or as god has declared is a good thing okay now e even as we are um, we you know we just have probably five more minutes for the end of uh, uh, this session you know i just want to open it out for anyone who may have any questions anybody would have uh, any questions okay i think uh, someone has raised a question let me just read that question out beth you had 
raised the question of what about first corinthians chapter 7 verse 28 so let me read that verse for you okay uh, it says but even if you do marry you have not sinned and if a virgin marries she has not sinned nevertheless such will have trouble in the flesh but i would spare you okay so your your specifically i think your question is um beth uh, would you like to place a question on that would you like to place a question uh just paul seems to be uh saying that actually if you get married you'll have more troubles um mm. and we're saying marriage is a good thing um mm -hmm. so how do we balance the two okay so um in if you look at Paul's life, he chose to stay single. Now, as we, we will be addressing this in our future chapters, right? So when, we, when Paul was talking about being single, the, the only reason or some of the reasons why you can consider being single is when you, know, you are called to do something for the kingdom of God. You are called to service for God and you choose and you understand that you would the pursuit of things of God would be greater than having um, maybe uh, uh, having a relationship having a marital relationship so when you look at Paul at what Paul's saying is he's saying hey you know um, if you do get married don't worry it is not a sin okay but if someone wants to get married it is also not a sin but he's saying that you know when you do have marriage and a family there are going to be responsibilities there are going to be things that's going to probably uh, keep you from doing the work of god as complete as it would be if you were single but that's again that's a choice god's not saying that it is wrong to be married or it is not wrong to be married and that's what paul is saying here but if it is the pursuit of God in his kingdom, uh, he said, that's the choice that he's made. Right? I hope, Beth, that was clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in no way against marriage. I'm quite happily okay. married. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, also, if you go further down in verse 40, he, uh, he's talking about um, a woman whose husband dies um and he says she's free to marry again but if you ask my opinion she'll be happier if she doesn't so yeah. several times in the same passage he's kind of indicating that if you're not married you'll actually be a happier person and uh, mm -hmm. i think all of us who are married we know that there are a lot of stresses that come along especially with the parenting and everything um so uh you know it just seems a little bit strange that we have Paul here saying, you'll be happy if you don't marry. But then in Genesis, God is saying to Adam, here's a wife so you won't be lonely. But also mm -hmm. when you look at Genesis, we see that actually Adam was the only human. What if there was 20 other humans, male and female, and he could just enjoy their company? He might not have been so lonely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. it just seems a lot of different uh, aspects to the whole thing. And All right. Yeah. Okay. So, Beth, did I answer your question? Or did I answer your question earlier that it, it was um, when Paul, Paul had his pursuit was the things of God. And he, that was his focus. That was the, that was the race he was, he was running. And he did, um, uh, uh, he was convinced that he was called by God to attain that. Okay, and our callings may all be different in uh, maybe when it concerns with marriage too, and that's what you determine with God, right? So what Paul's saying, either of these places aren't sinful. It is good if you're married. If you aren't, it is as good. Right, so he he's giving you um, that uh, that ability to to have your conversation with God or anyone to have the conversation with God to settle that in. Yeah, I think one one part of it is whether it's right or wrong. That's mm -hmm. one part, but I think Paul also is addressing mm -hmm. um, something else, which is who's going to be happier, who's going to have the easier life, and he's saying actually, if you're single 
you'll be happier and you'll have less troubles he's not saying it's right or wrong he's saying you'll have mm -hmm. less troubles because clearly mm -hmm. he says in verse 28 uh, those who marry will face many troubles so mm -hmm. better not be married that's what he's saying mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. not actually saying is it right or is it wrong he's just saying from my experience this is how it is mm -hmm. okay so um on i you know that that's that's a good insight but on the other hand if you look at ecclesiastes it says um two are better than one right so it's it it talks about that as well so on either side of it yes um when we are in the world there will be trouble we will face it okay but if we were to probably look at a at a match what is better what it what isn't probably on either sides of it you you will have your own challenges okay but again it is being um keen to know what god would like you to do you know whether you know in marriage or outside or out of marriage uh, not out of marriage sorry in marriage or without marriage you know how what god has led you um to pursue all right uh samuel you had a question and we'll take this question and break yes samuel I did, uh, but I'm thinking if it's a little too heavy, uh, the question. Um, so, a uh, cousin of mine, we, I, uh, he stays in the same building that I do. Uh, I see him every day. So, uh, believer, Christian, um, the whole family. Uh, so, he he got married um, and then, um, you know, uh, they didn't. They didn't have kids. The wife couldn't have kids, and uh, and uh, she took to drinking. And uh, and then uh, the husband. Uh, I think they've been married for a little over twenty years, but almost half, like ten years. He uh, he he was he did his best for his wife. I would say like to remove her out of it. But, even to an extent where they went and adopted a, a child who was like, in a, and and they were so blessed in terms of like, the the child that they adopted was a baby girl, uh, was there from day one, uh, of the day that she was born. So it was all as close to as the mother herself giving birth. But irrespective of that, uh, the wife could not uh, give up her uh, alcoholism. Um, turns out that her. Mo the wife's mom was an alcoholic and, and there's a history. So it's, it, you know, like uh, even if the wife was not bad in it, the, the good chances that she might have, you know, taken up to drinking um, given the upbringing she was. But that's just expected. But, um, but now they're 20 years married and the husband's kind of given up on the wife, given up on the family. Uh, he, he, I think, I mean, the wife gone to an extreme, like she's, the doctor's given a last chance, like she's had liver cirrhosis and all that. And so the doctor's like, if you don't change your ways, you'll die. So almost the whole, like every, I mean, she's a nuisance to the whole family. Uh, they've been through a lot of counseling. Everyone's come, tried to help. Uh, now I think, uh, so, so there are two perspectives. One is like, obviously they blame the wife a lot, but the family's reached such a point where, They've all given up, and I think in a way they're uh, waiting for the wife to just die, so that everybody has. Uh, so it's it's that sorry state, um, and uh, and uh, you know, and then a lot of people like people new. Like I, I, I mean, a lot of people who come new and just see they they either blame the wife or the husband for not you know fighting hard enough. Like the, the, there's a lot of counseling. Uh, yeah, and you know the, 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 there's a lot of counseling to the wife but also to the husband saying like you need to fight harder for your pray harder for your wife go for a fasting prayer there's that but he he's kind of given up you know, he's, he's given up because it's been too long and too too painful. messy for him I think. painful for him um, and I'm and as I read like ma marriage is a good thing and it's, it's my heart's like heavy for for the guy when I think of him, you know, and so I, I know this is true. Marriage was designed by God, but I look at his life and then I, I don't see that in his life, you know, and, and it just, so that's just, I was thinking of. Okay. It's, thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, maybe I think I just have one thing to say. 
is that, um, um, and we'll break uh, just, just a few seconds, is that when we do know, uh, you know, God gives us a, a, a spirit and a sense to know that something is not going right in a relationship. And when and if we are able to pay heed to the spirit early on and, um, you know, get help for it or, you know, get counsel for it or work through it, uh, the outcomes are much better, right? And, uh, and, and this is something that I've seen even in counseling people who come early on uh, in, situ in uh, relationships where there is a struggle uh, have far better outcomes than those who drag it for years and years and years, hoping that things would just sort out on its own, right? So the spirit nudges us, but it is something each of us make the choice to step in to uh, work in obedience to that, to that uh, nudge that the spirit gives us to work on. So um, as a, I think as an application for each one of us, even if we are ministers, we can have struggles, okay? Especially, I think ministers are specifically targeted. People who, who are in the Lord are just as much targeted, right? So at any point of time that you have a concern in your marriage, in a relationship, in the family, seek help. It's not wrong to seek help. It's not wrong to get, uh, uh, to get godly counsel. It's not wrong to be mentored by, uh, by another couple who is uh, strong in the Lord. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your questions. So we'll take a 10 minute break. Um, it's 10.58 on my clock. Um, so we will return in 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Have a good coffee break. Thank you, ma'am.